Hello everybody, hopefully your quarantine is going all right. Mine's not going too bad, although I will admit I am a little sore and my ears are a little shot from all the protests going on. I assume nationally at this point still, but specifically in Portland, Oregon is what I'm referring to. I filmed a little documentary on that stuff if you guys would like to check it out. But anyway, I wanted to mix it up a little bit and talk about something different. So no shit, there I was. I was just scrolling through the news and I was like, okay, what is something that I would be able to talk about? And then I received this type of article that the New York Times had just posted that I think should receive a lot more attention than it does. A little background on myself. A part of the reason why I want to talk about this is not only because it's important, but because I want to get my PhD studying U.S. security policy and extremism specifically. So when I hear about a story like this, which is about fascism, I'm like, oh, there we go. This is something that I be able to talk about and provide a little bit of substance to, you know, the general community that is listening to me at this moment. So before I say anything more, I'm going to give you guys what the New York Times has to say, and then we're going to break it down from there. So here's what they said, quote, Facebook on Thursday removed advertisements posted on its platform by the Trump campaign that prominently featured a symbol used by Nazis to classify political prisoners during World War II, saying the imagery violated company policy. The Trump campaign had used the ads with a picture of a large red triangle to inveigh, I believe that's how you say that, to inveigh against Antifa, a loose collective of anti-fascist protesters that President Trump had blamed for violence and vandalism during the nationwide protests against racial injustice. There is scant evidence that Antifa had been involved in any coordinated campaigns during the demonstrations. So after the New York Times had said this, they had actually posted the advertisement. Now they were given the advertisement by Media Matters. So here is the advertisement right now that President Trump was trying to post. Now I get it, you probably can't read the words and I'm going to read the left advertisement here in just a second. But the point that I wanted to make here is look at the type of triangle that is being used. That is it. But anyway, here is the exact quote. Dangerous mobs of far left groups are running through our streets and causing absolute mayhem. They are destroying our cities and writing. It's absolute madness. It's important that every American comes together at a time like this to send a united message that we will not stand for their radical actions any longer. We are calling on you to make a public statement and add your name to stand with President Trump against Antifa. Please add your name immediately to stand with your president and his decision to declare Antifa a terrorist organization, end quote. Okay, now that we got that, here is a picture of the actual fascist labeling that was used in the prisons. So this was from the Holocaust Museum in California. Now, I haven't been to this specific one, but I do trust the source. Now, let me ask you a question, because I know there's going to be a lot of people saying, well, hold on a second. This is just a happenstance. Like, how do you know for sure that he intended to use that? Oh, man. All right. I know I shouldn't be intellectualizing this, but here we are. So let me ask you guys just a rhetorical question, because I know there's going to be people out there who are probably watching this video who are going to say, well, no, this is just a coincidence. What is the coincidence or the the percentage of odds, I suppose you could say, that someone using a fascist symbol is not related to the fact that he is talking about left leaning anti fascists? What is what are the odds of that? Mind you, this is an upside down red triangle. Right. So I think we get the point here. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is how exactly is this going to end? Well, Trump has pretty much secured a good portion of his base, actually from doing things like this, like pandering to fascists and stuff like that. And also people view Biden as a classic establishment Democrat, like, for example, Hillary Clinton. And so even though Trump may make things worse, that change is still preferred to a lot of people because it's still different, right? It's like ripping off the Band-Aid and then now seeing the open wound. However, something that I want to bring up to you guys is that there is something called the creation of a culture of conflict. And that's the problem here. Because there are certain aspects of a society that we essentially get used to. For example, we're used to being at war. Millennials specifically, we grew up with it. Gen Z, we're used to that type of stuff. And now, when we see all the types of violence that the U.S. is doing overseas, we're starting to see it more inside the United States. We're seeing the types of things like protesters versus police. And we already knew that police were also attacking, like, for example, dominantly minorities, right? But we're seeing that more and more often right now. And what we're doing is we're creating a culture of conflict. So we're now we're taking the types of efforts that the U.S. is doing overseas, that type of imperialistic mindset. And I don't mean to go like full like Marxist or anything like that. I'm just saying that we're we're taking that industrial complex and now we're directing it inwards. And that's huge. That's just just problematic. So if you're trying to think about who are we going to vote for Trump or Biden or a third party, more than likely it's going to be Trump 
or Biden. If you're wondering who you should vote for, Biden sucks. Obviously, I'm not even going to talk about that because people who follow me know that that is my given position. But we need to take steps, step by step. Right now, we have to get rid of Trump. Because my question to you, has there ever been a president to use a Nazi symbol? Yes or no? No. Let's get him out. Let's get him out and let's move forward. Okay? That is my ending comment here. Because the moment a creation of a culture of conflict is started, that is hard to undo. That is it. Thank you.